I made a video yesterday titled Minimize the what if questions when designing a backend system. And uh, I got a lot of great discussions and things that I absolutely missed, to be honest. So it was clearly a little bit premature to post that video. But in the hindsight, it was actually good because I got a lot of great feedback from you guys, which I love this stuff. So I thought I'm going to talk about some of the aspects that I missed on the previous video and kind of expand on the idea of Yagni or you aren't going to need it philosophy, which has been invented back in the uh, 90s, late 90s uh, by Rob Jeffries, I believe, uh, in the extreme programming philosophy so how about we jump into it guys and discuss that guys if you're new here my name is hussein and i discuss backend engineering in this channel and uh, pretty much any software engineering concept that particularly interests me i discuss software news specifically just software news and so if you like this stuff uh, subscribe like this video share with a friend and uh, let's just jump into it guys so yagni or you aren't gonna need it is it's a philosophy that have been still brought up of extreme programming because extreme programming was was good but it had a lot of criticism so this is one branch that have been brought up to agile and still still being used sometimes all right so the question is when is this applicable asking the question am i gonna need this or not or you're not gonna need it it's just it's not almost a question it's just rob phrased it as as a statement so you're not gonna need it period because it was back in the extreme programming. However, in the agile world, that's not entirely true. I'm going to talk about that a little bit, right? So you aren't going to need it is absolutely fantastic. As I talked about in the previous videos, like minimize the what ifs, right? Well, what if this? What if this? What if this? What if this? The moment you start asking a lot of questions, something is off, right? But the question is, when do you, when do you know when to stop? the design and say, okay, this is it. That is if you have well-defined requirement. If you have well-defined requirements and then you're starting to actually form the design and build the system design and says, oh, maybe in the future the customer will ask about this. So let's build in this feature right now in the design so that we can satisfy that future requirement if it comes. That's a slippery slope. And if you do that, adding that extra feature will shake the design. Why? Because adding this feature will introduce a new concrete concept. And when you introduce a concrete concept, another concrete concept, you start seeing these concepts floating around. And then your developer self, soul, will kick in and says, this is ugly, right? What do we do if things are get ugly in the design, guys? We abstract them, yeah. We build an interface, right? This book. Oh my God, this book teaches me. The first thing you, this book teaches you is don't program against a concrete class. Program against an interface, right? So if you want to implement something, build an interface on top of it, if I can return this book correctly. It, it teaches you that we, we've been taught to program against interface, at, le at least me, uh, object-oriented, my object-oriented days. Uh, recent today, these the current today programmer don't have this concept in their mind, but th that's what I've been taught, right? So yeah, th the moment you start at, and pl plumbing these abstractions, example of an abstraction in RabbitMQ is exchanges, uh, queues, queues is... I understand exchanges for a user. It's like, what the heck is that, right? Q, RabbitMQ. It was designed to build a RabbitMQ. Oh, this is a Q. Then you add exchange. It was added to, to mimic a feature called pops up, right? And they the only way they can do it in an abstract way is to add this idea of exchange. And then they invented the idea of fan out and stuff like that, right? Again, not dissing RabbitMQ. I'm just saying that the, the, the afterthoughts of adding things can complicate the design. As a result, the, the simple user who want to just use the queue will have to friction with 
these abstractions that they don't understand. And only probably only the developer or the implementer or the designer actually understand. Would complicate the story. Just because what if? Just because you might need it. So that's why Rob Jeffries, his his extreme ideology is just to you're not gonna need it. Cut it off. <sighs> However, some of you in the comment section below in the in the in the previous video mentioned that I was saying, let's be honest, that's not possible in the agile world. And then they are true. They they are right. You guys are right. In the agile world, you don't have the whole requirement set. You have sets of that's not necessarily releases. We have a set of iterations. We're building each iteration. We are about to ship something in each iteration, right? I talked about that in the agile video. Check it out here or here. Check it out here. If I don't know what I'm gonna build in the future, technically, then I'm the, the the developer will start guessing. Hey, since they asked for this feature, that because the product owners start building these this 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 imaginary releases the betas and, and the alphas and then the final the beta and then after that the release right so they were gonna sit, sit, sit men ships with every iteration to ship something and as a result certain requirements and the developers are are almost blind to what we're gonna come next but the, some developers actually predict oh the product owner they 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 told us just to to build this feature but they are actually asking for more stuff in the future so might as well just design the whole thing or build the application in a way so that it can accept this stuff in that case asking am i gonna need this is actually might be a good question and this is the what ifs so in a given release Agile can be a little bit tricky if you don't know the scope of the minship of the whole release, right? That's why visibility comes into mind and, and being a good product owner that kind of shove the, the it, it try to increase visibility with the developers and the engineers as much as possible is very critical. So if I'm building a whole release, yes, whatever behind that release, you shouldn't worry about, I think. You design for the whole release. And that's not something everyone would do. Extreme programmer, they will design for every iteration. An extreme programmer. And some people still do that. I've been into multiple teams in my company. And I've seen both spectrum. Someone who designs for each iteration. Which is... I didn't like it, to be honest. And someone who designed for the whole release. And someone who don't design at all. I've, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. So it's all really depends on your style, to be honest. And, and how do you thrive? Some people like the flexibility. Some people like say, okay, let's design when we actually need something. That's the extreme programmers, right? So it's like, okay, this is a little bit far. Waterfall, on the other hand... That's why a lot of people still prefer Warfall. You're not going to build, the example is, oh, you're not going to build an aircraft software with, with Agile, right? Uh, yeah, some people still diss the Agile methodology because it's just built for the web, right? But I don't know if that's absolutely true, right? Still, it's, it's popular. It has its advantage and disadvantage. I'm not talking about that. I'm not going to go to that. But Warfall, the good thing about Warfall is... You talk to a customer, or, or even if the customer is you, then, as Naval said, you have full market uh, uh, penetration. What's that? Mar you have a market need, essentially, because the customer is you. If you're building something for yourself, that's the best, best thing ever, right? You know what you want. And as a result, you build the whole... I keep bumping into mic. You build the whole software. You build that waterfall methodology you build everything you think about a requirement and then you have everything now you sit down and design whatever you want right and here you, you that's the problem is like you should really just stick to what you absolutely gonna need don't think is 
Oh, in the future, I might add this feature. Nah, let's, uh, let's add it right now. That's where the slippery slope kicks in. So, it's, it's really interesting. When do you ask yourself, am I going to need this or not? And the question is when I'm going to need it, right? And so some people actually told me that. The question is actually when. When I'm going to need this? If I'm going to need it now versus next iteration versus next release versus next three years? Yeah, it's probably if it's the next release, personally, I'm not going to worry about it. Because let's build for this release. Let's ship a good, clean design, base solid design. And as I said before, if your software is built into into a microservice way, so it's like everything is a service, not everyone will agree with that, but then you don't really care, right? Because this software was designed, this piece, this service was designed to be atomic and nice and, and, and very, it does one thing and one thing only. So it does fit like a microservice to me. That's the definition, right? And then if you, if you want to build something else, you build another microservice that communicate with that if you want to. So you add just plug it. Now, performance, security questions, oh, security problems, performance problem, that, because you introduced, you introduced hops, right? If you push it at microservices, right? Because they're chattiness. If there's specifically the service is chattiness, then you have to solve other problems, which is the performance problems and, and security. Some people think about performance as a first class citizen. Some people, some designers think it as, okay, I, mean, I want to ship a good product that works. Perform I'm going to worry about the performance later. Uh, I don't think anything is wrong with that, right? It depends if you're competing with something else. If you're the first product, and really, it really depends like what performance really is here. Security, I started to pay more attention to security these days. Uh, as I design more and more software, and as I learn more about security in general. And it's very interesting. It's just, the whole thing is tough. Building everything, you cannot build possibly everything, right? You can design for performance. You can design for clean design and, and clean software. And to me, that's, that's a priority. And you can design for security, right? it's like equalizer you can slide one thing off one thing on but you you're gonna get into a problem right and so you cannot do an extreme slide of everything oh i'm gonna best software best performance best security and simple to use <laughs> i don't know about that you might get it with time Look at Twitter, look at all this stuff. They still fix security bugs until this day. Every single Tuesday, they release the, whatever called the security patch, right? It's there. You, Someone might invent a way to do all the three. I don't think it's possible, but the question is, are you going to need it? And what do you guys think? Do you know when do you going to need something or not? Or... Do you decide to go to the extreme route and, and just, hey, even if I'm going to need it next month, I'm not going to do it right now. I think this is a little bit, this is a little bit too much. But ask, the, ask yourself, like, when are you going to need it? That's, that's a good question. That's, I love someone who said, like, I, I need to get, I, I give you credit. Uh, your comments, I think it's, it's lofty. I hearted that, but so it's pretty good. That was a pretty good uh, read to me. That was good. It's like the question is like, do I need it? And when do I'm going to need it? Not just what if, right? And and you, because you're going to need it. If it's, it's like, question is when? If it's going to be next year, third, three years from now, over, so next month. If it's next month, right? Or if it's just like, if it's the next, I didn't ship the release yet, right? And I'm doing alphas. I'm not going to design mini alphas, right? That has like half-assed requirements and have to design i'm gonna give me the whole thing for the whole release something that's shippable that the user actually can use and and the final product design the whole thing people still figuring this out guys nothing is written in stone we're making mistakes we're learning from them and we're gonna keep moving guys guys that's it for me today i'm gonna see you in the next one what do you think about this uh, philosophy you're gonna need it you aren't gonna need it i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome. Goodbye.